Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new series here on Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones. I thought it was time to add another series to the two we already have going. I kind of fancy having sort of three series running at the same time. So this will be the third and this is a custom house. As you can see from the title, we are playing as Lord Xander Longspear. Now I've had this idea for a character for quite a while to be honest and I have sort of tried it out a couple of times in different scenarios but we are actually playing the Robert's Rebellion scenario so this is set some years before the events seen in the TV series Game of Thrones so perhaps it's something new for a few people people who know the backstory and the lore of Game of Thrones will be very familiar with what's going on at this time period if you're unfamiliar essentially there is a revolt going on uh, Robert Baratheon is attempting to take the throne he's got the support of John Arryn uh, Eddard Stark and Hosta Tully. He's good friends with John Arryn and Eddard Stark and it all starts lots of complicated reasons but essentially there's two main events. There is the execution of uh, Eddard Stark's brother and father by Ares the Mad King and the abduction of Lyanna Stark who was betrothed to Robert Baratheon by Rhaegar Targaryen. So the whole, the whole realm has descended into chaos and into war so it's a very sort of tumultuous period in Westeros' history and we're looking to take advantage of that. We are playing, as I said, a Xander Longspear. Our sigil here, the white spears on the red background. Our traits, we are a brilliant commander, a formidable fighter, brave, ambitious. We're also deceitful, cynical, ruthless and rude. So we are very heavily military focused here. We are looking to sort of take things by force, I guess. It's sort of similar to the Gregor Clegane playthrough. But our ambition here is to eventually try and take... We are actually the heir of Renford Riker. Uh, I believe the Rikers are fairly prevalent in the books. Not a huge house, but a fairly important house. They currently hold the High Lordship of Duskendale. And that's our first target, to try and take Duskendale. Then probably look north to take up to sort of Cracklaw Point. Possibly then moving down into Rosby. And just slowly gain more and more land until we are in a position to sort of become a base of power of our own. Essentially start a new kingdom up here north of King's Landing. Or maybe try and take the Iron Throne if we so wish. Now I believe I have gone ahead and yes I have okay I couldn't remember if I'd done this I have gone again ahead and done some of the essentially the admin work for this series so we have our council here I believe we've given out most of our titles I think I've got a betrothal uh, that I've requested but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we're being appointed as Chief General of Duskendale uh, we'll accept straight off the bat because the only unfortunate thing about this series is because we are a vassal of uh, Lord Riker and not uh, Ares Targaryen. We can't be a commander of the Iron Throne or anything. Um, so we are a commander of Duskendale, but not of the Iron Throne. So we do need to try and build some more power. Ah, there we go. We are actually uh, now married to Ilaria Sand, one of the Ullers. Uh, attractive, p patient, brave, kind, and lustful. Quite an interesting character. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with her if you've played this mod. Very sort of eligible uh, spouse, if you wish. So we've had gone ahead and got that marriage sorted which completes our ambition to get married. If you haven't watched my series before, I do tend to like to roleplay with this. So, based on the traits we've got, you know, we are ruthless, we are cynical, we are deceitful. So, it's not all about our military focus. We are going to be looking to plot where we can, try and do things sneakily if we can. Um, apparently she needs a tutor, so she's got good diplomacy. So, we'll just get whoever our best diplomat is to sort of finish her education, if you wish. Uh, and she's also going to be our designated regent and high almoner when she comes of age. But she's not quite ready for those titles yet. All hail his grace, Ares of the House Targaryen. The second of his name, King of the Andals and the Rhoynia, and the first men. I never say that right, I do know. Uh, and the first men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. Long live the king. I don't think um, Xander would have any problems with Targaryens, essentially. I think he's quite neutral to a lot of people at the moment. Essentially, the story I sort of came up with was that the original owners of Brindlewood uh, decided to side with... Uh, probably the the Tullys here probably decided that they would try and get a marriage alliance somehow to the Riverlands and Ares find out about it and although he didn't do anything harsh he didn't kill them or anything they are still courtiers here in Brindlewood they the um the land was given to me due to my military prowess so sort of Ares sort of spotted how good I was on the battlefield and decided that that would be useful in the wars to come and immediately we are stressed not quite what I have in mind to be honest I'm uh, not quite sure why we're stressed. Of course, the problem is at the moment we are very close to the Riverlands, so this massive army may eventually come and besiege us, and we obviously don't have the men to fight a giant army, but uh, we're going to have to hope they don't affect us too much, but they are tearing through the king, the crown lands at the moment. 
And we're going to have to hope that Ares can do something to help. Ares is still in King's Landing. He's not leading any armies. And in fact, there don't seem to be many uh, armies anywhere, surprisingly. There seems to be a lot of... Uh, a lot of Baratheon armies and a lot of um, Tully armies, and now an army from the Vale coming down as well. So it's not looking good for Ares at the moment. I might see if we can do some plots or something to try and maybe speed this war along. Because I'm, as I said, I don't have any problems as such with the Targaryens, but I feel like because he can see this Tully army approaching, um, Lord Xander would try and do something about it. So who's actually leading this army? Lord Titus. Can we try and... I don't think we'll be able to assassinate him, but... Uh, it's a bit, of a, a bit annoying that we can't sort of switch... Oh, can we switch sides? That's a good question, actually. Um, let's see if we can. Ah, I can. I can actually attack, but then I will be at war with my own um, sort of commanders. Uh, my own um, lead, should I say, in Lord Renfred. So I stay supporting the throne. It would be cool to see if we could switch sides for the war and try and sort of send an army down to support this big uh, Riverman army here. Um, or Army of the Trident. No, it's not the Army of the Trident. Is it? Is it the Riverlands? It's called the Kingdom of the Trident, so we'll go with that, the Trident. Um, but yeah, the problem is that then I would be at war with uh, Renfred Riker, which, again, I don't have the men really to fight him off. I, I've just realised, where's my... Okay, he is fabricating a claim. So our first objective, obviously, is to try and take these smaller bits here. So we're trying to take Antlers and Birch Hall. This would give us three out of the five areas needed in the uh, in Duskendale, and then we can hopefully have enough men to attack Renford. He has actually got, I believe, that, is that his brother? Uh, or a family member? Yes, yeah, his brother is also Lord of Hollard Hall. We are now being sieged. This was coming. We kind of expected this. So we're not going to be able to do anything for a while because this is going to deplete us of all our men. Unless they can very quickly end the war, but I don't think it's going to be that quick. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame in this one that, that the Targaryens do tend to lose, to be honest, on the Robert's Rebellion scenario. It would be interesting to see how history would have changed if they'd stayed in power. But as you can see, these massive armies on their way. And I'm not quite sure where his armies are. He doesn't seem to have any, which is a bit weird. I haven't seen a single um, Targaryen army anywhere. So whether they're defeated very early on, I'm not quite sure. I'm just, I'm just hoping they don't do too much damage to us or take us prisoner or anything. Is she now old enough? Okay, Lady Alari is now old enough to be our regent. And also High Almond. I get her reputation, her relationship up with us so that we can cre create some heirs to our little burgeoning kingdom here. Because our stewardship is really low, we don't have much opp opportunity to sort of hold land for ourselves. So we're going to have to be clever about this. We're going to have to make sure we have plenty of heirs that can take land as well. But at the moment, we just need to survive. These first sort of few years, I guess, of this scenario will be a bit slow for us and a bit sort of on the defensive. But hopefully once the Targaryens um, decide to surrender, things will open up. So they have now finished besieging our areas and are moving on. Uh, I've got no men to sort of break the siege or anything, so we're going to have to wait until this war is over. Which is a bit annoying they're not now attacking um, Duskendale or Hollard Hall. That would have been useful for me. These two areas inside have been sieged, so they may take a while to build up again. But as I said, it is a lot of just waiting around for these wars to finish. I'm not quite sure why they... I will read that in a second. Uh, why they decided to move away from King's Landing. At first you were overjoyed to learn that Alaria was pregnant. But that joy turned to rage when she confessed that you weren't the father. Who was the father? Prince Oberyn the Red Viper. <sighs> of course it was. Of course it was Oberyn. Well... That's unfortunate. So we could righteously imprison her. We've got an 83% chance. I think I'm going to. And then uh, request a divorce. Because otherwise it just gets messy, essentially. So we'll find another partner to go for. Um, so we need to find another potential spouse. There are some courtiers in the crossing, which might be quite useful. So we've got Titer here. Um, Liness Hightower, she's attractive. Uh, but it's not quite of age yet. Um, uh, there's a Hutchinson there. We can't be looking too high. We can't be expecting to marry sort of princesses or, or you know, people with substantial claims on big bits of land. We kind of need to be sensible and reasonable. There is an Arryn here, which will give us a an alliance with Gull Hall, and of course Arryn of Gulltown. Arryn is a good uh, sort of name. 
Um, trying to decide. Because there are, doesn't look like there are any good alliances that we can get. So it's either do we go with the high tower and wait a few years, or do we just go for... We're going to go for... Where was she? Uh, Pera the Courtier in, in Goldtown. I feel like that's a decent enough match, essentially. And we'll do the same. We'll make her our regent and high almoner to make her like us a bit more. This is also good because we get two lots of uh, dowry now, which is always nice. It's only 10 gold, but... The feasting has begun and the endless courses Lord Renford ordered are impressing the guests. The pinnacle of these is an enormous pie uh, surmounted with smaller pies forming a crown. The crust of the large pies are silvered, all round and gilt at the top. Each pie contains a whole roe deer, a gosling, three capons, six chickens, ten pigeons, one young rabbit and a partridge on a pear tree. No, uh, no doubt to serve as seasoning or stuffing a minced loin of veal, two pounds of fat and 26 hard boiled eggs. Uh, this is vaguely ridiculous. I think that's a fair assumption of this serving. That is rather preposterous. But, I mean, it's probably tasty, I guess. Something I'd, I'd mind eating. So, yeah, hopefully we're now we can get a air from a pair of Brindlewood. A uh, pair of Brindlewood? No, a pair of Goldtown. She's an Arryn. Not quite a legitimate Arryn. I believe they are a cadet branch, essentially. Um, so it's not like we'll suddenly get a claim on the on the veil or anything. Uh, she has a claim on Gull Hall, which is just there, which is actually separate at the moment, which is interesting. But I presume when the war's finished, they will join back to the veil. So it's not like we can sneak up and take a bit of land up there. So we're kind of relying on our uh, just to see now to get us a claim on Antlers and then Birch Hall. Although it is useful that he took this bit from his brother because now. We can get a claim without having to go immediately to war with uh, our our liege. Although they probably have an alliance, I guess. No, they don't actually. They don't have an alliance yet. So, wouldn't spring to war immediately. It's 98% in favour of Robert Baratheon here. He is going to win the war and take the throne. Just like he did in sort of the legitimate history, the canon story. Although they are fighting back. I'm not quite sure how. There is finally an army here, but it's 75 men, which isn't going to make much of a difference. The guards drag Ilaria Ulla up from her cell and throw her to your feet. I've come for justice, she says. By right of birth and blood, I demand trial by combat. Combat. Lord Harmon Ulla will be my champion. So Lord Ulla wants to fight me to free Ilaria. His dual skill is 6. Let's have a look at mine. Oh yes, it's 21.5. I think I'll be able to do this. I'll handle this myself. I mean, if we die here, this is going to be absolutely hilarious. Um, except it won't, because that'll be the end of the series. We're going to go for speed. Managed to hit him straight away. Oh, we managed to dodge the attack there. Sorry, I'm, I'm fl flicking through this quite quickly. It's not really interesting. It's just sort of picking the right option until it works. Um, so we have another go to hit him this time. Uh, we're going to go for speed this time. Uh, your experience in combat and prowess with your weapons allows you to spot an opening in Lord Harmon's defence. It's not much, but it's all you need. So I avoid his attack, and I manage to kill Harmon... Uh, Harmon Ulla, Lord of Brimstone. So, his whole family isn't very happy with me right now. But, eh, not really too concerned. Uh, so we can either execute Alaria, we can send her to the Silent Sisters, uh, let her rot in the cells, or she can stay under house arrest. I think I'll send her to the Silent Sisters, sort of get her out of my court, but also gain some piety from it. Uh, because of the traits we have, our piety is going down quite quickly. So now Lord Ulwick takes Brimstone instead of Lord Harmon. Not quite sure why he thought that was going to be a good idea. Um, that's another point to note that because I've not done any sort of editing or used command codes or anything, these are just traits that you can do in the... Um... Sorry, I'm trying to read that. Um, I'm trying to focus on what I'm trying to say and things are popping up. You know, I've not like changed or added any of these traits afterwards. This is all done in the DLC, the character the customized ruler editor so this is a character you could very possibly make yourself on this mod um so i'm not a knight at the moment because it takes up a lot it makes you a lot older and i thought so 24 25 was a good age to start at so we are hopeful hopefully can get knighted at some point but this is saying that lord robert brathian has won the war uh his grace has issued a decree declaring that all kinsmen of Ares targaryen shall henceforth be considered enemies of the realm any person offering assistance to said kinsmen shall suffer the judgment of the crown so, Viserys Targaryen has been exiled, it looks like, to Essos somewhere. 
uh, all the way to near Volantis, base, uh, near Valeria, sorry, basically. A husband and wife musician couple has arrived from Lise. Their performances range from vulgar satires to political serventi serventies? Serventies. Ser serventies. Sure, we'll go with that. And, and everything in between, including songs and poems of courtly love. Courtly love, pa, or they'll be paid well, I assure you. I'll give them some gold, why not? Wow, okay. Sorry, everything's kicked off suddenly. Dawn is fighting for its independence from the Iron Throne. I presume that now that Robert Baratheon's in charge, they don't feel as comfortable being connected to the Iron Throne. So they're fighting for independence. Not quite sure what happened to all of the Targaryens. We'll have a quick look at what happened to the rest of the target. Oops, pressed the wrong one. So Ares was, unsurprisingly, executed by Robert. Uh, Rhaegar was also executed. He was hanged. Princess Rayla, though, has survived. I believe she... Yeah, she's the one that took Viserys to Essos. So the Targaryens do just about survive with five... Actually, five living members. Uh, I'm not quite sure who the other members are. I presume that... Uh, ah, so Rhaenys and Aegon are still alive as well. They were taken to Essos as well. And then, of course, Aemon, Aemon Targaryen is still on the wall. So lots of people fighting for their independence. All hail is Grace Robert of the House Baratheon. Long live the king. We'll always say long live the king. I feel like Xander just sort of supports whoever's, who's, whoever is on the throne at the time. So well, this claim is a bit slow coming through, which is a bit annoying. I was hoping to have taken some land by now. Uh, we can get another bodyguard. Malcolm, he's not the best, but I feel like the more bodyguards at this point, the better. We also need a better commander at some point. So hopefully we can invite some people to our court. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if Dawn can actually win this one. Because obviously the Iron Throne will be slightly weakened by the wars they've just fought. While Dawn have... Ah, actually they don't have many men either. And they're being besieged. Oh, by 84 men. I think they'll survive that. Uh, but lots of other wars going on as well. There's... Uh, Bard's Home want the independence. Gultown want independence. I think I'm not in alliance with him. Thornton want independence, and uh, Last Hearth want independence. So they'll probably all lose, obviously, because they've only got about a thousand men each. Although Last Hearth is a Hair Lordship, so you've got three thousand men. Uh, but obviously the Iron Throne can still beat them back, especially if they have the support of the other realms. Ah, there we go. My liege, my work in Antlers seems to have come to fruition. By bribing and cajoling, exalting, threatening and forging documents, I've managed to fabricate a claim on the Lordship of the Antlers presently held by Lord Donald of Antlers. Of course we're going to use that, so we do have a claim now on Antlers, and immediately we're going to move on to uh, Birch Hall and try and take that. Of course, neither of us have any men left because of being sieged during the war, which is a bit unfortunate, but we're going to have to live with that. So we are going to have to wait a little bit before we can do anything and claim war. The inheritance of Lordship, the inheritance of High Lordship of Dragonstone has been thrown into question after the untimely death of Lord Gunther Bar Bar Aemon, a Bar Aemon took uh, high, uh, took Dragonstone. That's interesting. Um, Scalera Greenpools is now who the hell is Scalera Green? Uh, I can't even say it. Scalera Greenpools, interesting name. So she is the Lord of Sharp Point, and now the High Lord of Dragonstone as well. She's got no heirs either. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the inheritance in the end. So now we need a claim on Birch Hall. Now that we've got a claim on Antlers, we are going to have to wait a while uh, until we can use that. My liege, there's rumour here in Duskendale that one of the lo local nobles might be corrupt. Handled wisely, this information might be used to implicate one of your enemies here. He's not got the highest intrigue, so I'm going to tell him to leave it for now, because they can be very easily killed off if their intrigue isn't very high. Uh, so we won't bother with that just for now. We will wait a little bit longer. Just to see if he can sort of find any more evidence, I guess, essentially. Um, our income is very low. We're not making much gold, so we're not able to recruit any mercenaries. So we are just going to have to wait until our levies and garrison all reinforce. And we will end up with more men than him just. And obviously, with my skill as a commander, it should be quite an easy win. We then have to take Birch Hall as well, who again, he doesn't have many men either. In fact, he has a similar amount of us, by a uh, similar amount as us, but by then we'll have two plots of land, so we'll be fine. Hopefully, anyway, that's the that's the plan. We haven't had a son yet, which is a bit worrying. Uh, as more revolts against King Robert Baratheon, not had the best of starts to his reign 
it's fair to say, as, as the Dornish are attacking Night Song now. I'm not. I'm surprised they didn't just march up to King's Landing, to be honest. And Robert is with an army somewhere. Okay, he's in this army here of 4,000 men. So it looks like he's going to try and face Dawn and end this uh, rebellion as soon as possible. Is that Area Hota that's leading that force? I think it was. It's interesting. Been invited to a plot. Which plot is it? Uh, so someone wants to kill Lady Felice of Duskendale. We'll accept. As I said, I feel like we are quite a sneaky character. And it would be interesting to see what happens if he dies because his brother would inherit the land. But he also doesn't have any heirs whatsoever. So it'll be interesting to see what happens if all the Rikers sort of start to die out. Uh, we could try and kill Lord Renfred, but I don't feel like that's an advantage because his brother is actually a better marshal or a better character overall. So we'll see if we can uh, kill off Lord Jeremy, although not many people want to join. So we're going to cancel that immediately, <laughs> basically. Um, I don't feel like that's going to be very helpful. We do have a high chance to kill Lord Renfred. I presume because we are actually at his court. And is there anyone that's going to want to join? No, not particularly. So we'll cancel that again. Um, ah, so there's another inheritance. Lord Perkin Boggs left no clear heir of North Cracklaw Point. So Felice Pyle is now Lady of Cracklaw Point, who is his wife. So it makes sense that she gets the land rather than just giving it to someone else. Now there is an attack here from... Last Hearth. We've marched all the way down from the north to attack these bits of land. So they are obviously quite serious about trying to get their independence. So we'll have to wait and see. I think I'm actually going to wrap this episode up now, though. I know not a lot has happened. I mean, a lot has happened in the realm in general, but not a lot has happened to us. But this was just kind of kicking off this series, introducing you to the character, letting you know sort of what our plans are. So our plan at the moment is to take Duskendale by taking Antlers and Birch Hall, then claims on Hallad Hall and Duskendale, and from there start to take these other High Lordships around us, so Rosby, Rayonet, eventually try and take Cracklaw Point if we can, and build a little sort of miniature kingdom up here that can eventually be used to challenge the larger kingdoms around us. So that's the plan. Hopefully next time we can get that claim on Birch Hall, reinforce our troops, and finally make a move. If you have enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to this new series, please do feel free to leave a like. I'm quite excited for this series. Again, as I said, it's a character that I've had in my mind for a while, and I wanted to sort of present it as an option. If people aren't bothered about this series, I may sort of start again with another custom character. I've got a couple of other ideas in mind. So it's not like this is this is the series. It can be quite flexible if people wish. But for now, as I said, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.